slide getter goer. And John is uh, John here on is a volunteer at the park. And he oh, comes Danny, she just don't know anybody's name. Videotaping, and then Jay is a photographer that most of these pictures come from. And Jesse, oh, and uh, Jesse is our volunteer too. So we are all wolf parents and all fox parents. So we love Bays Mountain Park and all the animals there. So my, my friends come up and say, "We're going to go." So uh, this is fox tails, and I will have a fox later, uh, a live, real live fox. I'm sorry I couldn't have a bobcat. That didn't work out, but hopefully next year I'll have a bobcat. Um, and then the little puppy, uh, wolf puppy, is not going to happen because January is wolf, not wolf puppy day because wolf puppies are not born until uh, April. So. so this is Jamie the fox. Uh, that was when he was young, pretty young. Uh, he's beautiful. He's not a red phase. Foxes come in different phases. Uh, is what it means colors, but we have well, he has a cross face, and there's a few, very few like him and naturally in the wild. And I will have show a picture of that. Um, that was one found in Mount Rainier, uh, I think it's in Washington, and he's he's cute. Uh, so this is Jamie the fox. Uh, he come to us. Um, he don't have a good start in life, but he has a good finish in life because mm -hmm. somebody bought him. You know, legally, you, you can buy foxes as long as they're born in captivity and raised in captivity. But sometimes it's not a good idea because foxes stink, and they eat your walls, and they eat everything. They, well, they're foxes. You can't change a fox's attitude just because you want to, just because he was born with people. You know, they're foxes. So um, I guess about three weeks they found out they didn't really, were not good for foxes because uh, he stinks. They stink like uh, skunks. Uh, their pee stinks like skunks all the time. So what you smell in the woods most of the time is not a skunk, it's a fox. Because foxes, urine smells and he smells like that every day. So if you walk outside and smell that, oh, it's a skunk. Well, most, mainly it's, it's going to be a fox because foxes move through the neighborhood peeing on everything, making their smell. But uh, skunks only do that when they're frightened or, you know, uh, something happens to them. Um, so that's really pretty, Jamie. So he was sold in about three or four weeks to somebody that would make that illegal because you can't sell a wild animal because you don't have the license to do so. So then that person sold them too because he said, well, I don't want a fox that's nasty. Uh, they leave at my couches, and they do. So they, uh, he wound up in a kill shelter. So all these people know me, all these wildlife officers, said, do you want a fox? I said, absolutely. When we got him, he was four months old. He had a broke leg. And he was pretty, he, um, you know, he looked pitiful a little bit. So now he is not pitiful. You can't even notice the limp at all. So uh, he's um, about four and a half months old. He came to live at Bays Mountain Park. And he had to go to the vet for his leg, and uh, he he's got the best of care and the best of food. Rhonda, uh -huh. so once you buy it, you have to give it away from that point. Oh no! Well, if if I bought a fox legally in Tennessee, there's a place you could do that. But if I don't want it anymore and I sold it to my niece Becky, um, that's illegal because I don't have a license to sell a wild animal. The 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 thing is, when you buy this animal, you have to sign a paper that says you'll turn it back in to the place you got it. So they don't end up with this happening. Yeah. And that mostly is not because you paid a lot of money for that fox, like $600, and you don't want to give it back to them. You're going to sell it. So that's when it's illegal and it's not you know, that's how a lot of foxes from Lindsay, Lindsay Hembry, uh, owns a wildlife exotic and sanctuary. That's uh, where she gets most of her foxes. People get them and let them out. I mean, they, they can't take care of themselves. They have no idea how to kill a squirrel or a rabbit or something. So that's what makes it illegal. You not buying it is illegal because you sign documents for the TWRA and all that. But when I sell it to you, that makes it illegal because I don't have a license to sell wild animals. So, yeah. So his name is Jamie, and he's a he's a doll face, uh, and he's very 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 friendly, of course, because he's never been around another fox. Did you tell him two pieces? Uh, huh? The two bulbs? Not yet, because okay. I just got a fox. Okay. I just got a picture. Oh, I'm the Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Hills beginner. <laughs> uh, the American red fox is vulpes, vulpes, blovus. That's what's here. Um, and we, they're not, they're not, they're native here, but they come from Europe. So when Europe people moved over here, Europeans, they brought foxes. 
so fox and the hound they can hunt them and run them and all that stuff so that's what we get our fox from they're a little bit smaller so the american red fox is vulpe vulpe slovis and it's a north american subspecies of the red fox vulpe vulpe that come from europe um, historically you know they were classified as two species um, but they kind of um, they're not two species they're the same species and a subspecies so that's, that's the difference a little bit smaller and a little bit slower uh, the european is a little bit bigger and faster a red fox has a relatively long body and dense fur they have dense fur the sum, through the summertime but in the winter time they turn into a big old cotton ball because they have under fur and outer fur and they have special fur on their on their legs too i think i will get into that They're, they have whiskers on their legs and on their face um, the fur is typically rusty red color, and the reds are darker in color, or sometimes black. So Jamie is more colorful than a, than a natural color red fox. Uh, sometimes the, the, her, the whole legs are black and Jamie's are not. Jamie's belly is kind of white, though. He's, he's, this is beautiful. Look at him. He's so like, take a picture of me. Take a picture of me. I'm so pretty. Uh, and that's when he was young, probably in his first year, right, Jamie? About his first year. Because he know he was new. We've not had a fox at the park for years. So he was new and he drawn in a lot. But I don't, the only place that he could go was an old raccoon enclosure. And it's the old, you know, uh, round structure, swift foot across. Uh, not my favorite structure, but, you know, we had a home for him. And I've spent four years, and all the volunteers have spent four years trying to get him a new habitat. And that's coming, hopefully. In another month or two, I don't know. Uh, foxes have really pointed ears and long canine teeth, and I know guarantee it because you know, uh, if you work with animals, you're going to be bit. And he's got really sharp teeth, like a uh, like a wolf. Uh, on their underside, the fur is white uh, from their nose down all the way to their belly. Uh, male fox is called a dog. Girls are called vixens. Um, they weigh a little bit more than the females, uh, 10 to 12 pounds. But Jamie probably weighs about 14 to 15 pounds. But he looks like he weighs 25 because he's so fun. He's so furry. Um, let me see. Uh, the babies. Uh, okay, the, the males, if you look at the male and the female, they do have visual differences too. Like most animals do, but not all. You can't say, well, you're a girl deer and you're a boy deer until the antlers come out. When they're born, sometimes boys have a longer nose and girls have a shorter nose. Usually. Same thing with the fox. And usually wolves too. They look girly. Sometimes they look girly. Uh, they mate in the winter, about right now, um, and then the female fox gives birth to approximately 10 kids. That's a lot of mouths to feed. Uh, and the boy don't care, but boy just leaves the mom, leaves you know everything to go. Not like a wolf. Wolves stay home and they stay all the time. Uh, but you know the boys just go around making their babies because so they can spread their genetics everywhere and have five or six girlfriends, just like bears do. Uh, and deer do so you know uh, deer do that uh, there's not as many deer, big bucks as they are females so um, that's you know boy usually boy bears in base mountain they just come through they don't live there really they just travel through uh, making girl you know having girlfriends and having baby, making babies to a different three or four different girls so that way we we know he is stable he's big he's healthy so he wants healthy babies in, in, the, in the world, in the ecosystem. The kids are dark gray when they're born. They're not red. They're not even any color. Kind of, they're kind of gray because gray blends with just about anything. Um, they, the, both the male and the female fox cares for the kids until they're about ready to leave. But the girl, the female lead, uh, stays more. The boy kind of goes around and maybe kills a few items but they're not like wolves. They don't stay and travel like the wolves do. Maybe the boy go, goes and comes every couple of days and they'll come back maybe with food. Oh, look at that. I wish we had some babies, but Jamie's been fixed. Uh, and I'm sure the girl has been fixed too. So that's so cute. They're, they're probably food begging. Um, that's how wolves do it. That's how coyotes do it. They, they lick around the mouth and causes the um, the female or the male uh, to regurgitate. Regurgitate is not stored in the belly; it's stored in uh, the esophagus, so it don't have stomach acids on it. So it could just be readily uh, regurgitated. Now, if they wait about 30 minutes and nobody's uh, 
a, a food bagging that goes down to their stomach and it's they don't want to throw up they just not regurgitate female foxes reach sexual maturity at an age of 10 months so they're born in like march and they're having babies by the next the winter um while it takes a male fox is a little bit longer wolves are exactly opposite wolves wolf are supposed to now not our pack because our pack is weird uh, but our pack uh, usually females uh, are the uh, two two years old and boys have to wait about another year to take over and and kind of uh, have babies so it'll take a little bit longer than boys kind of like humans and girls mature faster the average lifespan in the wild is like two to four years that's really short yeah. um, Jamie's will be five this year so he might live to 20 Hopefully he'll live to 20 because, you know, he gets medicine, he gets the perfect food, he gets the perfect care. So, you, uh, of course, you up their life expectancy in the, in, the, in the zoo setting. The American red fox differs from the European forms of the greater worth of its feet and the longer fur and noticeably shorter nose and ears. Because you can tell the difference if you look really good or if you've got one side by side. But if you've got one over here and one over there, they're hard to tell apart. Um, according to the hunters' accounts, they have less vigor and endurance in the chase compared to the European counterparts. So you know, when you when you change their ecosystem, you change the way they live. Animals change over time; it's called adaptation. So just about, just because you took an animal from Europe and put it over here in hundreds of years, they change to our environment. Uh, they adapt to our environment. They don't need to be big. They don't need to be. Uh, have a bigger feed. They adapt to our environment, just like all of our animals and us too. And look at me pretty. He's just so pretty. That's his summer fur looks like. Um, right now, Jamie has a big brush. Anybody know what a brush is before you read it? A tail. The bigger the better because that's a blanket. That's his blanket. You can see uh, him curled up on his rock or uh, whatever um, on his little den. Uh, up, to, um, up in the air, a little, little cake, uh, his little crate. Uh, he's laying around right now, and probably with his tail laid all the way around him because it's a blanket. It's called a brush, and the bigger the better because his tail probably is this big, uh, about as big as around as he is, just about. And then that'll all go away. It, it, that all that under fur, under the guard fur, it's kind of like under armor, it will disappear. And he'll scratch it out and rub it out. Everybody says, oh my God, he's got mange. No, he's just shedding his coat. Because he don't need all that. It's gonna be summertime. Uh, sometimes they probably about a one month, they look raggedy. Uh, wolves, somebody said in the paper one time, the letter to the editors, I don't know why you don't go in there and brush these wolves. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we met, you know, we kind of made fun of that because, you know, I, mean, I went up there and I say, I think John, somebody got a picture of me trying to brush a wolf. Was it you, Jay? Somebody was, you know, I took a brush up there. But you know, they don't like that. They don't like that. As puppies, they don't mind it, but they bite at the brush. So you can't go brush a wolf. They do their still. They go by the trees and stuff. Um, so when they, this helps insulate and protect uh, the body from the elements, if it's pouring down rain or pouring down snow, they'll just curl up and put their tail all the way around them. You can't see nothing except fur. Um, foxes make their homes by digging burrows in the ground uh, or leftover burrows, burrows from somebody else. Uh, these burrows are also called dens, and that's where they overwinter and have their kids. Usually they don't spend, nothing hardly spends their life just like a bird. Bird uses nests not to live in but to have ba eggs and babies and then they fly away and then they use that nest or create another nest. That's not a bird's home. A bird's home is just everywhere. Um, and then just kind of like the wolves. The wolves have homes, home spaces and uh, territories, but they don't live under the ground. Wolves like to live outside the ground and so do foxes. They want to see what's coming and what they're chasing. Uh, the red fox is recognized by its reddish coat white tip tail and black stockings. If you see a fox and it's got a white tip tail, it's the red fox. If you see another fox, it's smaller and kind of grayish red and don't have a tip on its tail, the white tip, that's a gray fox. They're two different species and they can't interbreed. And foxes can't breed with dogs either. That's why you don't hear dog foxes like you do wolf dogs. They can't breed because they're, they're canine, but they're not canines. So they can't breed with dogs. Um, the outside of their ears may be black tip, the little tips like a bobcat. Um, 
the white tip on the tail distinguishes other uh, all the species apart. Um, sometimes the color is red is the most common color. That's why we call them red foxes. But all red foxes are not red. They're black, white. Color phases, all, all kinds of color phases, like you all. Uh, red fox display the color pattern or preferred to by the same, by the name of the phase. Red fox, a red phase. Uh, red fox cross cross fox. A red fox silver and black. So they're all red foxes, but they have different colors. Uh, what's north? <coughs> you're, you're, that's all white. It's maybe an arctic fox. People call it an arctic fox, but it's still in the same family. That's the color phases. That some of them are generated, you know, in home milled or home based uh, breeding facilities. Uh, marble, beautiful. Lindsay has a couple of those. Uh, you can get on her site as uh, exotic pet wonderland, but it's not really pets, but that's what she named it. Um, and then here's the typical red fox and, and the black face, and here's the typical red fox that you, you know, that's, that you see mostly running across the road. And they're they're bigger than what you know they look big, but they're not. You know, they're really little. They're uh, probably 15 pounds. Is the white one bred in captivity? Or that or occurs in the wild a very few times, but it occurs. But that's mostly all the. This one probably was bred in captivity because they're worth more money. You know, I mean, the otter you can get, just like snakes, you can get white or purple or whatever. That's usually not wild done. But see, that probably this one was uh, in a farm, you know, uh, a fox farm, and they, they sold it, and they're worth more money the different colors you can get. And there's champagne, and there's all kinds of colors. And of course, if you breed a champagne so many times, you're gonna get champagne babies, and they're worth more. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, they go to zoos, which is a good thing, not taking animals from the wild anymore. Uh, that's how zoos used to work. You go get an elephant as a baby and keep in the habitat for 60 years. But see, we don't take from that, that anymore. Uh, so, so like our wolves, we don't get our wolves from the wild. We get our wolves from um, wolf breeders and they're reputable and they're USDA certified and TWR, you know, all their state certifications. So you just can't go out and get a wolf and put it in captivity. It's against the law. Even for me, if I have a license to educate, I can't just get out a black snake, go get a black snake, because uh, it's illegal in uh, Tennessee. Tennessee has some of the strictest laws in the wildlife community, and I'm glad they do. Uh, the pictures of this, this is a wild fox in Washington, and he's the same color as Jamie. So it does happen, it does happen in the wild. The reason he's called a crossface, sometimes if you look at the directly at his head, he looks like a faint cross and you look directly at his back, his color forms a cross and their cross phase is not cross. They don't cross member like uh, different foxes do that. So he's just a normal, he's just a sought after color and look at his tail. Man, my goodness. He's beautiful. The tail's as big as his body. And he looks a lot bigger than Jamie and I thought he probably is not. It's just probably the way the picture was taken. And somebody sent this to me. I found a Jamie. So I said, well, you know, I'm going to use it in my program because all foxes uh, like him are not generated in a, on a farm. So uh, he's a natural. He's pretty, but they don't happen very, very much. The cross fox, for example, has a black brown cross on their back and their shoulders. Uh, and you can see it sometimes really plainly and sometimes you can't see it at all uh, because their hair... Uh, their fur changes year to year because he gets older, uh, plus his hair color changes like a wolf was is born black as that cover right there. And then two years, she's gray. You know, they, they change the color of hair too, like, uh, like we do. <laughs> uh, the silver and black phases are similar. So, however, the, the, the black does not have a silver tip tail uh, guard hair. I'm sorry, give me the middle. Okay, the cross face, for example, has a black brown cross on the back and the shoulders. The silver and black phases are similar. However, the black phase does not have a silver tip guard hairs. So their guard hairs, this is the big hairs that they always have. And they're different colors along that same hair. Wolves, are, wolves have that too. It's better for uh, camouflage. If you have one black hair, one silver hair, one brown hair, but it's better to have each individual hair different colors because it's better camouflage. Um, 
The occurrence of black silver face appears to increase toward the north and the northwest to Alaska. However, they're a most abundant and it compromises less than 2% of the population. So they're not very, very well known, but they do occur. Fox facts. I'm just going to rattle off some facts here. A fox can live up to 10 to 12 years in captivity. I think the oldest is around 20, 18 to 20. Um, foxes have make scent posts with urine and feces to mark the territory, and it stinks like a big old skunk. Probably no. look, sometimes you walk by Jamie, you know, Jamie's smelling today, uh, you know, because he goes around peeing and pooping. His poop smells like that too, but he's fixed. The, you? Just a minute. Uh, boxes can make up to 12 different vocal sounds. She's she's coming. Boxes are nocturnal. Uh, foxes have excellent senses. They can hear an animal underground. <coughs> boxes constantly hunt for food, even if they're not hungry. Jamie piles up food in different places in his habitat. He never has an empty bowl. He gets everything out of his bowl and has puts it everywhere. Um, they eat a wide variety of food. They're carnivores, but they eat everything. They eat insects, they eat snakes, they eat. Uh, Jamie's favorite food is green, uh, bell, pe green bell peppers, green, not any color, no, I'm sorry, red bell peppers. He don't like green, he don't like anything else, and he loves cucumbers, and he loves smelt and mice and whatever, but he loves vegetables. A large part of the diet makes up of invertebrates, crickets, caterpillars, grasshoppers, beetles, and crawdads. And we give him those two. We find, you know, sometimes we grow dubia roaches for the other youngins to eat. And when one dies, we just give it to uh, like, it's a like a potato, potato chip. To him. Huh? <laughs> like a potato chip. It crunches like a potato chip. He loves them. Uh, fox predators include coyotes, bald eagles, gray wolves, bears, mountain lions, and humans. So that's their, their predators. Just pretty, it's a pretty girl, I mean, pretty boy, I'm sorry. There is a strict dom dominance hierarchy within the social groups. Kids start to establish dominance hierarchy in the den. And some fights occur and sometimes one, two pits will appear out of six because the other ones have died in the den. That's, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a thing. Um, the hierarchy is about seven to eight weeks, seven to eight weeks and thereafter. They are, fights are serious. Wolf fights are serious too in the den because you know they got big claws and big teeth and there's a small place and they're rooting for mom and they're rooting for space and they'll fight because Natar, our oldest wolf, she come out of that den with a scar. So she, her nickname was Natar with the scar because they was <laughs> identical. So uh, she, she don't have that scar anymore because she was a puppy. More facts. The fox is a distant relative of the wolf. They can hear a watch ticking 120 feet away. Uh, they can hear a mouse squeak over 100 feet away, and they, uh, they would dig up the dirt and snow to catch its prey. 28 different types of calls to communicate with each other. Not just yipping. I walk up and, and Jamie, anybody, you know, one of the keepers walk up and Jamie just goes on his back and starts talking. We just start talking. Out. We talk too, and people just love it. Um, they can run up to 30 miles an hour. They can catch a rabbit. Uh, they have mobile ears. They can turn independently, so they can hear everywhere around them. They, they're well. I've already said that. Their pee smells like skunks. <laughs> you can tell he's a young man right there. Uh, they're called a skulk or a leech. If you see a bunch of foxes, you can say, "Oh, I see that uh, skulk." <laughs> uh, they have whiskers on their legs as well as their face, which help them navigate. They are so great nighttime predators because they have specially adapted night vision to see in, uh, in, the, in nighttime. So they have more rods than cones in their eyes. They have vertical pupils and stalk their prey and, and have spines on their tongue like cats. And Jamie don't like squash. He pees on all of his squash and poops on all of his squash in the cage. So we quit giving him yellow squash. He don't like it. He likes green, but he don't like yellow. And he likes cheese. I remember the day Jay took that picture and he said, well, it's got cheese in his mouth. Oh, that's good. He loves cheese. We only feed him real cheese, not, you know, not the crap cheese or whatever. Uh, special <laughs> senses. This is the last slide and then I'll let Lindsay come in. Uh, the special senses, a lot of people don't know this. Uh, he's much like a guided missile. A fox can see the Earth's magnetic field as a ring or a shadow in their in their eyes. So that's why you see foxes go around 
can go around and they're like zero in the end. There's a mouse on the ground, but they have to pinpoint it exactly where to go. So when they line it up for the, the magnetic north, to them, they can pounce and have like 80% right on. Um, other animals like birds, sharks, uh, turtles have magnetic sense also. But the uh, fox is the first one to, to, they find out they use it for prey, not homing sense. So that's a pretty cool. That's why you, when you see, you know. So they're not really using their really good eyesight to have prey then. Not at underground. They're using their ears and their magnetic sense because they can't, yeah, they can't see it. They can hear it. And then it lines up. It's pretty cool when you see it on TV and go on Google all this stuff and, and research that. It, it, it'll show that happening. It's really pretty cool. Uh, Jamie is getting a new habitat this year. It's being built right now with the water and electrical already there. Um, it's, we just got a, uh, it's, this is the wolf pen. Um, this is the place I picked because Bay's Mountain's on a mountain. And I, this is the kind of the smoothest. So the electrical water in the pond is going right here. And a, 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 like a, veg, a vegetation barrier is coming from that tree to that stump. So the wolves can't stand there and do this all day and make them uncomfortable. <laughs> so if they want to see him, they can catch, you know, catch visions of him. And Jamie can catch visions of him too. He's going to have a bridge. He's going to have a rope ladder. He's going to have everything that you could imagine state of the art in the fox habitat. And I've been working four years. We've been working four years on that. Everybody that you see here has worked on the, the fox den. So that's the other side. That's what the wolves are going to see. And night night. So I'm going to turn up the lights while you let Lindsay in. Now, don't go all crazy because, you know, he's a wild animal. Uh, oh, she, I think she brought a she, I can't remember. Uh, so remember, you know, uh, respect the animal. So, uh, she's used to a large group, but, you know, she's a wild animal. Let me go turn the lights up. See the TV better with the camera. <laughs> okay. This is Lindsay Hembry. Uh, I told you about her before. Uh, beautiful fox. Look at her tail. She's in her winter mode. So, uh, what are you doing, Wendy? Ain't she beautiful? She's a red fox, red specimen. She's absolutely gorgeous. And this is her first show. So she's actually really excited to be here. She was a little car sick on the way, but she's eat up everybody's attention out there. So if you want to just walk around and people can see her. What are you doing? Hey. Gorgeous. 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 This is probably what you see when you run around in your yard. It's going to run through. Um, she, she 